who is not here. I don't know. And maybe that person is not here because you have not invited him or her. So, I'm going to call one of our anointed minstrels to come to bless us with a song. And as the song, as the song rolls, I need you to share the link with somebody. There is a double blessing for you if you send it to two people. There's a triple blessing for you if you send the link to three people. Tell them there is something happening at Makane Church International HQ Facebook page. If you can send it to four people, then something massive is happening to you. So ladies and gentlemen, take your phones, the same phone, and just, you know how to share. Those days, you used to share some things. Those days, you remember those days. Now that you are born again, you can share the word of God. So take your phone and share the link. Call them and tell them to come to church. There's a new way of having church. And we are having church tonight as you are inviting someone. And as we do, everyone inviting someone, your friend, your sister. There's a lady, there's a man who is chasing you. He needs to know Christ so he can stop disturbing you. Send the link to him that your pastor has a message for him. And I believe God is going to bless you. And as we do, help me welcome our brother Osam Teria to bless us. You may be seated with a hand clap. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Tonight we are going to tell God that we offer our lives to him. And he should use us for what he wants to use us for. Hallelujah.
name we pray. Amen. 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 You may please be seated with joy wherever you are. I want to bless God for our wonderful choir. Clap your hands for them, the angels, and our soulists who have blessed us powerfully tonight. Clap for them. And let's also appreciate our instrumentalists in the house. Amazing guys. Now we are hiring ladies to be instrumentalists. So if you, are, if you sense a call to play instruments, come around and then be, we want drummers, keyboardists, bass guitarists. Perhaps when the ladies come, some will also get beloveds. <laughs> but tonight we are very privileged and I am very blessed to 
be here tonight ministering. Bishop Kobe blessed us powerfully last week. Clap your hands from Faith Secrets. Yes, clap your hands for him. And uh, today I hope I can also take you to the same level by the grace of God. Amen. <laughs> because seniors are always seniors. If you remember, I began to share with you from this book, Everything by Prayer. Do you remember? Everything by Prayer. Nothing without prayer. And I, I remember saying to you that after going through the salvation bit, we went through how you can be born again and avoid hell and went through some teachings about salvation, how to be born again, what your salvation means to you. And uh, I want to particularly thank our prophet, Bishop Dagwood Mills, for this amazing blessings these books we can't have enough of they are rich they are prophetic they are insightful and they are necessary for the foundation laying in the life of any and every believer and uh, after being saved I just felt the Lord wanted me to teach on prayer because when you enter into a relationship with someone, it's very important that you, you, you maintain the caliber of the relationship through communication. Yes, communication is a very important pillar in any relationship. In fact, it is the relationship. Yes, the, the relationship is as strong as the communication that exists between the two parties. So a new believer, a newly born again Christian ought to know how to pray. And I, I, I believe very strongly that it's, it's, it's necessary to, be, to have these teachings. And I remember teaching from how to pray for the will of God. Very important, which is to me, the best prayer you can pray. And uh, within this will of God is one powerful will of God for our lives. And that will is that we will know through prayer the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Many Christians have not understood that their Christian experience is empty without the Holy Spirit. In fact, you can hardly talk about Christianity without the Holy Spirit. Many Christians don't have the Holy Spirit. Don't know about the Holy Spirit. Don't yearn for him because they don't know about him. And because of the above... They are leading bankrupt spiritual lives. Bankrupt spiritual lives. All that is left of you will be Sunday church attendance. That's all. There will be nothing, not even one milligram of spirituality left beyond that which carries you to a church on Sunday morning sometimes. So, it is very important for every believer to know about the Holy Spirit. And today, I'm preaching from this book, Everything by Prayer, Nothing Without Prayer. I'm talking today about how to pray for the Holy Spirit. Yes, how to pray for the Holy Spirit. Because, ladies and gentlemen... If you are not in tune with the Holy Spirit, as I've already said, you are empty. You are bankrupt. 
there is nothing much to your life. I remember the other day when Paul passed through the upper coast and came to Ephesus. He met some believers. He met some Christians in Acts chapter 19. And he asked them a question in verse 2. He said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? That is, after believing, there is another project. When somebody raises his hand and comes to know Jesus, accepts the Lord as his personal savior, says the sinner's prayer, ladies and gentlemen, there is more. Much, 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 much more. Salvation does not end after saying the sinner's prayer. Salvation doesn't end after saying the sinner's prayer. Being saved is bigger, far bigger than saying the sinner's prayer. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? So you believe in Jesus, but there is a Holy Ghost to receive. Can you believe it? I'm sure you can see it on your screen. They said, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. We believe in Jesus. I'm preaching now. We believe in Jesus. We've said the sinner's prayer. But we have not even heard that there is something. Is it an animal? Is the Holy Ghost a plant? Is it a type of car? They said we have not even heard that is, nobody has spoken to us about the Holy Spirit. Wow. Tonight, I'm excited that after your salvation, you are hearing about the Holy Spirit. We have not heard. And that began a series of events which dominoed into they are receiving the Holy Ghost through baptism. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I am very grateful to God for giving me the privilege to speak about the Holy Spirit. Salvation without the Holy Spirit is an empty journey. And in chapter 3, my pastor and my father, Bishop Dagwood Mills, teaches us how to pray for the Holy Spirit. And I love the opener. The opener. Daniel 5.11. Listen to this. Daniel 5.11. There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in this human being. Whom the king, Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, Thy father made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. There is a man in thy kingdom. There is a sister in the office. There is a young boy in the classroom. There is a man in town. 
in whom the spirit of the holy gods in whom is the spirit tonight you are that man I said tonight you are that man you must not attempt to enter tomorrow without the Holy Spirit. If you know anybody who just got born again, better call the person to enter the service now. Send the person the link and say, there is something you must hear. Ladies and gentlemen, make up your mind to pray for the Holy Ghost. Very important. Paul asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost. So when you meet a believer, you must not be intimidated by the person's status as a believer. You also must go beyond the knowledge that he's born again and still ask him, do you have the Holy Spirit? Don't assume that the person will have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost doesn't enter our lives by osmosis. I said the Holy Ghost doesn't enter our lives by osmosis. He enters by active transport, active uptake. And that uptake is by prayer. It's by prayer. And you must decide to pray for the Holy Spirit and the seven spirits of God in Isaiah 11. The Holy Spirit will make you stand out. Today, there are Christians in a thousand member church. You can't find them. I say in a thousand, ten thousand member church. You can't find them. Many believers are lost in the sea of church membership. But from tonight... The Holy Ghost will empower you to stand out. I said, I see you standing out. The Holy Ghost will make you stand out. You will be called up for special occasions. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to. Whenever there is something special, they will call for you. In your church, when there's a conference, there will be something about you that will let them call for you. When there's a special program, when important people are being called on, by reason of the indwelling of the Spirit of God, you shall be called. There is a man in whom is the Spirit of the Holy God. When you have the Holy Spirit, you will stand out because of the light and understanding that is in you. Anybody you know who has stood out in any endeavor of life has an understanding the next door neighbor does not have. Is it a singer? Is it a keyboardist? Is it a pastor of a church? Is it a preacher? Anyone you know in the body of Christ who has stood out has stood out because of light and understanding. That's why in the king's court, the wife of Nebuchadnezzar said, there is a man. There is a man. Today you are that man. I said, today you are that man. I prophesy that they will call for you. Oh, I said they will call for you. In, in school, nobody called for you. In your office, nobody called for you. In your family, nobody knows you. But thank God for the empowering grace of the Holy Ghost. When he enters you, he causes light. Receive light. Belshazzar's wife, she didn't know about Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. Remember, I just read from Daniel. That is in the deepest crevices of the Old Testament. There was no Holy Ghost anywhere. And this wife of a hidden king didn't know that there's something called Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. What is, she said, but she said, no, this man is different from all the guys in town. And for, to her, it can only be the spirit of the Holy Gods. From today, you will be described as a carrier of the spirit of God. 
you'll be described as a carrier of special graces. Receive it in London. Yes, I saw a brother from Italy on the on, on the page. You are you are you are receiving in Italy something I'm sending you by special angels. Receive it now in Italy in Modena. She didn't know the Holy Ghost. But she recognized the presence of an excellent spirit. And she called the Holy Spirit the spirit of the gods. She realized that there was a level of light, understanding, and wisdom in Daniel that could only be supernatural. We are tired of natural gifts people can see. I said, we are tired of things about you people can explain. That when you are singing, we know that in your family, everybody sings. When you are dancing, we know that in your family, everybody dances. When you are preaching, we know that you used to be a rapper when you were an unbeliever. But ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Ghost comes into your life and imparts a grace that cannot be explained. From today, you are receiving as a believer, as a new believer, a grace, a power, an ability. Receive it now. Something that makes you stand out. It's not good. Hello. Look at my face. Somebody is in London. Look at my face well. Can you see my face well? It's not good for you to be lost in the crowd. Those in the church, it's not good. You, if you are, if you are a singer, you shouldn't be lost among singers. I mean, this evening I've had different singers singing, and each one came with his flavor. There is enough for you to also stand out. If you are a pastor, you cannot be lost in a thousand pastors. There is enough for you to get something to stand out. I'm commanding someone tonight. For, that you are receiving an appetite for uniqueness. I said an appetite for uniqueness. Any category you find yourself in. I don't care whether they are 10 people, 100 people, 7,000 people, 100,000 people. The same way you have a different thumbprint among 7 billion people. God has already arranged enough for you to stand alone. Receive your uniqueness. There is a man. There is a man. When people see your level of light. When people see your level of understanding. Tonight, those of you in church, I'm telling you that there is enough in God to make you unique. It's not a good thing to be unrecognizable. It's not a good thing. It's not the will of God. Jesus said, you are a city set on a hill. You, he didn't say you like the, the, the body of Christ. He was speaking to individuals. He said, you are a city set on a hill. I'm telling you that you must not die until you are standing out and being celebrated for something unique. And it comes from the Holy Ghost. It doesn't come from attending Presec. It doesn't come from attending a disco. It doesn't come from being a, a student of gay. It doesn't come from being a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer. Only the impartation of the Holy Ghost gives you something that places you in demand. They will call for you. The prophet said, they will call for you. I said, they will call for you. And, and that is what Belshazzar's wife saw. Said, no, no. There are many guys in the system. But there is a guy. There is a guy. He, 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 he has something. There is light in him. I don't know how a person can see light in a person. But whatever way light emanates, may it blow out of you. May it beam out of you. May it burst out of you. Receive light. Yes. And it comes from the Holy Spirit. He said there is light. There is understanding. And there is wisdom. No wonder he stood out. May you get the 
three blessings of light, understanding. Whatever you are doing, may you have special understanding of what, what you are doing is about. If you are a singer, may you have a deeper understanding of how to hit notes than your raw voice you are disturbing the cats and dogs in your house with. Receive an anointing to stand out. Say light. Say light. Say wisdom. Wisdom. And understanding. And understanding. Lift your two hands and say, by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. By the impartation. By the impartation. Of the Holy Ghost. Of the Holy Ghost. As a believer. As a believer. I'm receiving light. I'm receiving light. I'm receiving wisdom. I'm receiving wisdom. I'm receiving understanding. I'm receiving understanding. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Clap your hands for Jesus. Please be seated and let me give you things you should know about praying for the Holy Ghost. Yes, you got to pray for the Holy Ghost. Number one, you must pray for the Holy Spirit because Jesus specifically asked us to do so. And I'm asking you, wouldn't you want to obey Jesus? I mean, wouldn't you just want to obey Jesus? In Luke eleven eleven, he said, if a son shall ask bread of any of you, that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, Will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Tonight, I will give you a few minutes to ask God for the Holy Spirit. Don't say, Pastor, I have the Holy Spirit. If you truly had the Holy Spirit, we would know. Some light will burst out of you. You will walk in a certain level of wisdom. This is the only stand-alone topic Jesus taught his disciples to pray about. Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to help us. He promised to pour out his Spirit on us. And yet... He still asked us to pray for the Holy Spirit. I said pray for the Holy Spirit. Remember, he said, the Lord will pour his Spirit on us. He said he has to go. Because if he doesn't go, the comforter will not come. So he, we were promised the Holy Spirit. Ideally, we should all be sitting by the riverside Waiting for the Holy Spirit to fall like river. Like a rain. Like rain. Because Jesus promised. But the man who promised is the same man who, are, who is saying that pray for the Holy Spirit. Yes. And like, like we saw two weeks ago. Once again. Even though this is the will of God. It will never happen to you until you battle for it. And tonight we are going to ask the Lord, Father, give me the Holy Spirit. Pour the Holy Ghost in, into my life. I'm a pastor. I'm a reverend. I'm a shepherd. I'm a bishop. I've been born again for 80 years. But tonight I feel that extra rain can fill my vessel. Tonight, I feel that another, another dose of the Spirit will move me into, into a greater light. I want you, wherever you are sitting, to stand to your feet. Begin to clap your hands and pray. And ask the Lord for the Spirit. The Spirit. How much more? How much more? How much more? Look at it right there. Look 1130. How much more? 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 Will your heavenly Father freely give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Pray. Clap your hands and pray. Matasula ba. Kabala baba. New believer, pray. Oh, Christian, pray. 
Pastor, pray. Santa leader, pray. Why? Jesus asked us to do so. Jesus specifically asked us to do so. Clap your hands and pray. In Matala Baba Sanga, Lambra Baba Sute, La Baba, Mayande, La Baba, La Mama, Imasula, Lembre, La Mama, Langala, La Baba, La Daba. Lembre kata ba ba ba, la ba 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 ba, la ba ba ba, lambra zata la ba ba ba, la ba zanta la ba ba yanda, la ba 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 yanda, le be 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 be, lift your hands, lift your hands, Holy Spirit, move me now. Make my, my life whole again. Spirit, move me. Spirit, move me. Lift your hands and sing it again. Holy Spirit, call on Him. Move me now. Move me now. Make my life whole again. Spirit, move. Spirit, move. Spirit, move over me. Spirit. Number two, please be seated. Why you should know, why you should pray about the Holy Spirit and pray for the Holy Spirit. Some of you have prayed for shoes. You prayed for a job. You have fasted for a beloved. You have never prayed for the Holy Spirit. And you expect to go far with God? No. Look, the Christian life, it's not lived by good upbringing. Like your mother was a school teacher and she was very strict at home. So she brought you up. We don't bring that to the church. Your father is a pastor. And so what? What should we do about your pastor? Your father. When I was in secondary school, more than half of the weed smokers in my school were sons of priests of a certain church. Yes. Those who were jumping wall. It's not about how you were brought up. Because the Christian life is a battle. And you don't fight battles with a disco education. Because you want science and mass quiz. Since last Friday or Thursday, you have even changed how you dress. You have changed how you walk. Because your school won National Science and Math Quiz. My dear 